I, in, my, in the translations that uh, Doc Esunim have done to me during this, this speech, I have understood that uh, a big point beyond all this Zen is to finish with the dualism and the dual mind. I'm correct until here, more or less, I think. 50%. <laughs> it's dual, so it's pretty good. Go ahead. Uh, uh, also, in, my, in the not much study that I've made, I've made with Buddhism, uh, I see that there is a lot of focus on finishing and extinguishing, extinguishing suffering. And for me, this is, makes me a lot of confusion because uh, if the point is to finish the dualism and uh, you are just focusing on one pole, which is the suffering, it's like, uh, so I ask, why don't you try to finish with joy at the same time? Or the opposite, or if you want to keep joy, why do you don't want to... What you mention is actually classic Buddhism. And in fact, you're mentioning the Four Noble Truths as the initial teaching of the Buddha, which is actually not the case. And it's not your fault that you don't know that. When the Buddha started to teach, he wanted to begin with the Avatamsaka Sutra. That's a one-liner. If you want to understand the nature of this universe, then perceive it as created by mind alone. Now, this was too steep. Like I said earlier, from zero to 100 at one step. Nobody really understood. This is revolutionary. It's, it was revolutionary 2,500 years ago, and it is right now. So he took a step back, and he said, OK, let's make this a little bit more palatable, gradable, understandable. So he posited something that everybody understood, that there is suffering, that we are impermanent, we are bound to causes and conditions, we are imperfect, etc., etc. So nobody would be exempt from suffering once they are born, they grow up, get old, get sick, die. Four misfortunes. So these things started the whole universe of the Buddha's teaching, but these are just corollaries, these are just starters. And when people were ripe, that was about eight to ten years, then he started to teach what we call the Prajna Paramita scriptures, which are the transcendental wisdom sutras, the Diamond Sutra, the Mahaparinirvana Sutra, the Heart Sutra, etc. And in that, he talks about going beyond suffering, going beyond good and bad. He never talks about exterminating dualities. This world is made of them. This world is made of black and white, right and wrong, because we make it so. He just says, go beyond it, find where they come from, and somehow take control of your creation, because we co-create this world for each other. And if you are in charge of your own creative moves, your creative mind, your creative heart, then you are in control of the dualities that you create also in control of those that you maintain and those that you take away. In that sense, suffering stops being something to be avoided. Dualities stop being something necessarily bad. In fact, without polarities, without the dualities and the tension or energy in between them, we wouldn't exist. So the advanced form of the teaching says, go beyond whatever is eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, or form, feeling, perception, impulses, consciousness, like in the Heart Sutra, that's the five skandhas, the five building blocks of our personality. Go beyond it. Attain a mind which is above all that. And from that mind clarity, or no mind, you can have a very, very clear path. Then your creation is clear, you're maintaining your creation, also clear. And taking away what you do not want to maintain anymore, that's also clear. With this, you become one with the world, then you can help other beings. Other beings who are still tied and bound by their own causes and conditions, their own identity, their own attachments, etc., etc. So I think this should make the picture a little bit more complete. That's why we practice this point. This point is neither good nor bad, neither enlightenment nor suffering. 
So Zen actually takes a very big step and when it joins Taoism, which took hundreds of years, in fact, then it really goes beyond the, I would say, textual teaching of the sutras. So the four basic principles of Zen is do not depend on the scriptures, directly pointing to human mind, attain your true nature, thereby become Buddha, and transmission from mind to mind outside the forms. Now these four principles of Zen are basically the foundations that make Zen into Zen. And I think then there's plenty of transcendental wisdom and what you need. And then dualities are happy as they are. And you're happy as you are. Okay? Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome.